Hey there, rock stars. Welcome back to String and Story. My name is Holly and Knight, and it's my job to guide you to quilt and to live with confidence. And y'all, I'm having webcam issues today. So y'all are going to get this up close and personal view on my computer camera. We're just going to make it work. Y'all, I have to be honest that re-entry from Iceland has been pretty bumpy. It was a long trip back and I am tired. I am still very, very tired. I added it up yesterday and over six days, I got 24 hours of sleep. So you got, oh, and there were two all-nighters in the middle of that. So it was definitely a whirlwind of a trip. It was completely magical. Like it was an absolutely amazing, amazing time. Um, but like I said, re-entry has been a little bumpy. So bear with me for a hot second. I am going to uh, make sure that this is showing up the way that it needs to. Us, the cat playing with the cabinet that you might be able to hear behind me. Let me get this shared over to the Quilting Rockstar so that everyone can come join us and then we will start our presentation. So I do have, um, I do have a slide deck for you guys today. I'm so excited. All right, let's see. Quilting Rockstars. I know, because we're just getting scrappy today, y'all. Um, come join. All right. And now... Hey, Winifred. Hey, Terry. Okay, I can see you guys. It looks like you can see me. So let's get this show on the road. All right. So proper quilting posture. If you guys have been around for a hot second, then you know that I'm really passionate about the importance of physiology, etc. as part of our quilting journey. And that's because um, honestly, our bodies are our most important tool. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me let me start here. <laughs> In this mini workshop, I'm going to teach you why basic physiology is important to your quilting, how to have healthy quilting posture, and how to have good movement habits so that you can have a pain and injury-free quilting experience. Doesn't that sound awesome? Because the bottom line is that if you've ever spent the afternoon quilting and you find yourself super sore and uncomfortable either during or after your stitching time, it's possible that we're kind of overlooking a very important thing here, right? Quilting is a surprisingly physical activity. If you have ever taken a big old quilt and shoved it through a little throat space, then you understand this, right? And so while we have a lot of conversations about thread weight and needle size, we don't talk about our most important tool of all, all that often. And that's our bodies, right? So how our bodies work is incredibly important to understand in order to have a successful quilting experience. Otherwise, quilting on your domestic is always going to feel like a very daunting physical task, right? And honestly, quilting a large quilt on a relatively small domestic machine, like that is a big task. But there are ways that we can make it um, less painful, less challenging, and less likely to result in injury. Because yeah, if it's bad if the sewing machine's not working, but if your body's not working, if you get injured, like then you're out of the game, full stop. And I don't want quilting to come to a halt because of a preventable injury or discomfort, or honestly, even just like a mental block because you haven't yet learned how to work with your body and your sewing machine and the quilt all at the same time, right? Let me see who's here with me. Winifred, Terry, Sue, Jan. Oh, it's so good to see you guys, which by the way, my International Free Motion Quilting Academy graduates, your pins went out this morning. It took until we got back, unfortunately. Um, that was no small trip to the post office, you guys. <laughs> That's a lot of forms, uh, but they are on their way. So hopefully they will be to you guys. I would guess right after the new year. I think it'll probably take until January for them to make it around the world, but I'm very excited that they are finally on the road. All right. So building the habit of proper quilting posture allows move or, um, and movement allows you to quilt longer, better, and with significantly reduced risk of pain and injury. And that's what I want for you guys, right? If you've been around here for a little while, you've already experienced some of the benefits about learning how your body works and how to be mindful of that when you're quilting. If you're new around here, I'm really excited to introduce you to this concept. It's been a game changer for me and many of the rock stars. Excuse me, Felicia just came in who are already here. You wanna say hi, Felicia? All right. The floof is gonna say hello. You say hi. I know. You're just still wanting to snuggle a lot. All right, let me put her out. Hang tight, guys. All right, Felicia, did I not latch this all the way? Okie dokie. Where were we? All right, so we're gonna talk through three key ideas today. We're gonna talk about sitting posture, standing posture, and movement habits, okay? which let me take a hot second and grab some water. 
And we're going to dive first into our proper sitting posture, okay? As most quilters do free motion quilting on their domestic machines, and as all of us piece on one, we spend a disproportionate amount of our sewing time sitting. Now, if you've been around here for a minute, you've heard me say time and time again, sitting is the new smoking, right? Like sitting has actually a lot of really uh, bad, like it's just bad for your body, right? Like we are not designed to sit as much as we do. And as quilters, this is especially important for us to consider because this thing that we love and we are passionate about is also um, coming with some inherent risks just because we spend a lot of time sitting as we do it. And as we're doing our quilting often to relax, to unwind, we don't want that to have a little bit of a kickback, right? We want it to be a positive thing in our lives. Hey, Kathy, I'm so glad you're here. It's easy to be lazy when we sit because we tend to associate sitting and relaxation. So here you've got a picture of me, but to whatever extent you're able to see um, as we're just, you know, going with the camera that we currently have working, right? Like it's easy to sit, right? And we just like kind of crumple and we collapse our abdominals and it's, um, we think of it as relaxing to, not have those muscles engaged. But what we don't necessarily think about is like the cost benefit there. And there's a lot of costs with sitting lazily. All right. So lazy sitting means you're sitting back on your tailbone. So here you'll be able to see this just a little. I'm sitting up on my tailbone versus back on my tailbone. Right. And when I sit back on that tailbone, instead of like up over my hips, my whole abdomen collapses, my shoulders round, my head jets out forward, just like you can see in this picture. Now, especially with that head jutting forward, it's often rooted in us trying to see under our needle better, um, which is all well and good. I'm all for being able to see, um, but it's better to have a high quality light than to just try to get our nose down near our needle, right? By contrast, our healthy sitting posture means that we've got our shoulders over our hips, you know, head, shoulders, knees, and tip, right? We know this song. And you really, you want your head over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips. And if you're standing, you know, your hips over your knees, your knees over your toes, right? Like that song is actually super useful. Um, so sitting with, you know, our head is up over our shoulders. It's not out here, right? Which is, I'm really bad at this, right? So making sure that our head is over our shoulders, our shoulders are over our hips. That means that our abdominal muscles have to be engaged, okay? So not like, you're not like flexing, right? And you're not sucking in. It's just, just a little cinching, right? Of holding those muscles so that you're holding your rib cage and your spine upright rather than allowing it to curve or move around, right? And then as well, keeping that chin as level to the ground as possible. So what I mean by that is when you're trying to look under your needle, your chin, you'll get kind of this like tippy chin, it'll get all over the place, right? So keeping that chin level. And what that means is we have to retrain ourselves to actually use our eyes to see, right? That means getting a high quality light, right? And allowing our eyes to do their job. But I can look down at my needle without having to get my nose way down there. And as someone with really bad eyesight, like this is hard for me. It's still hard, it's hard every day. It was something I was even noticing on the plane on the way to Iceland, because, okay, so my like plane activity guys is that I color, right? Like it's, I find it relaxing. Um, it doesn't require a whole lot of moving pieces. It's like just enough creativity to kind of scratch that itch, but it doesn't require like a lot of brain power, right? But as you may be familiar, like the light on planes sucks. Like I so wish I had brought like a little tabletop light. And I was having to be really careful to like keep my own shadow off my coloring page, but also not like wreck my posture, right? Because it'll, it'll mess you up quick if you don't keep things in alignment, all right? So two, proper standing posture, okay? So we spend a lot of time sitting, but we're not sitting, we're standing, right? Unless you have some method of like being in a hammock to quilt, in which case that's pretty cool too. Um, but for things like our cutting, our pressing, we wanna apply the same principles. And notice you can see in this picture that I really do have everything stacked on top of each other. You wanna think of your spine as Legos, right? And so your spine starts down in your hips, goes all the way up into your head, and you want those Legos. Now, it just so happens the human spine does have some natural curves to it, 
those matter, right? This is why we're not like, right? There's, there's a natural gentle curve in the lower back, gentle holding of the abdominals. We've got a little bit of a curve in the upper spine as well. But if you think of it as putting your head over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips, you're going to get that alignment pretty well. Okay. Um, Ski doing is hard on posture too. Yeah, I would imagine so. You know what else is like rough on your body? Snowmobiling. Just like random fact. Oh, which guys, this is a total aside, but since we're just kind of mentioning like posture in different contexts, like I love that Sue brought up ski doing because it is important um, if you're going to be practicing good posture habits in your quilting, like the way to get the most benefit out of healthy posture is to apply this in every area of your life. Right. So a couple observations like from my Iceland trip, we get to the airport. Right. And there were several of us who had laptops out working. But I definitely noticed that John's boss, Brooke, who was amazing. Sidebar. Um, she was working on her laptop. She had the most beautiful posture I had ever seen. Like if it hadn't been a totally creepy thing, I would have taken a picture of it and sent it to my chiropractor. And been like, look at this gorgeous posture. I definitely have done that before when I've seen people in public with excellent posture, just sidebar. Uh, but she was sitting just absolutely head over shoulders, shoulders over hips, working away. And I was like, girlfriend's not getting a neck injury on this trip. No, ma'am. Like, loved that. Other thing you should know when traveling, because again, we're just going to apply this to life. Um, when the airplane takes off, you want to make sure that you are facing forward in that perfect posture. Because while your body's not necessarily going to perceive it a whole lot, there's a lot of G-forces going on. Like we feel that acceleration somewhat, right? But it's a lot. Um, and so it's very important to make sure that your body is square and like your head and neck are square and everything's all stacked up for takeoff and landing. Otherwise, you, you really do risk injury because there's a lot of force at play. So just, um, oh, do you call snowmobiling ski doing? Oh, see, I just proved that I don't know what I'm talking about. That's cool. Um, I've only done it once in my defense, and I actually did not spend a whole lot of time driving. But, and Sue, you'll particularly appreciate this. Hubster definitely got in trouble for going too fast, which I could have just died like right there. Like I don't enjoy getting in trouble. Um, he was like totally worth it. Had so much fun. So anyway, sidebar. Um, but yeah, just to continue that vein though, like these like principles of posture, they don't just apply to quilting. They apply to every area of life. And the more that you can adopt them as a habit, a holistic life habit, the more benefits you're going to see right? Because if you practice good posture when you're quilting, but then when you read a book, you're like, and like all crunched up in a chair, guess who's often guilty of this? Me. Um, then you're still going to end up with like a sore neck, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I knew you'd appreciate that. Yeah, we were supposed to stay like single file. We were last in line. We get to this like flat and he definitely just like pulls out and like takes off. It was bad and funny. We didn't get hurt. So, you know, he had his moment of glory. <laughs> okay. So pay attention to your standing posture when you are cutting, pressing, or working at a long arm. Those are going to be your primary times as a quilter when you have an opportunity to really pay attention to how you're moving your body. Right. And I would say, um, Cutting's a hard one. I think a lot of us tend to pay attention to what's going on with our bodies when we're cutting because we're trying not to cut our fingers, right? So we are already more self-aware then. Um, but if you have a long arm, you really need to be mindful about this because on a long arm especially, I'm like honestly kind of horrified at the pictures and videos I see online of the way people hold their necks when they're working on a long arm. And it's just, it's asking for all kinds of issues, okay? And like, yeah, it's just, it's bad. <laughs> so be mindful of this when you're working. <clears throat> Excuse me. Finally, to continue zooming out just a little bit, this was a quick presentation today, guys. I must just be like, chat, chat, chat. It's okay. I have a couple announcements for you at the end. Um, Healthy movement habits. So again, because we want to think about this holistically in all of life, let me just talk through a couple of bigger picture things that I want you to consider. So what you're doing when you're not quilting can have a huge impact on your quilting experience. Like the example I gave of like, if you're very careful about your posture when you're quilting, but not when you're reading, right? Getting yourself all out of alignment and getting all sore while reading means it's going to be less pleasant to sit down and quilt, even if you're much more mindful of your posture while you're sitting at your sewing machine. Okay. But there are also some things that we can do 
um, just big picture to improve all of this. Um, oh, Sue, that's a great question. Okay, let me chew on that for a second and I'll circle back. So I'm going to refrain from getting up on my wellness soapbox too much. It's very tempting, but I do have a couple of key recommendations. And if you guys have, we're about to hit our question section. So if you have questions about anything I've already said about posture or questions about like the intersection of wellness and quilting, like I'm totally game. So feel free to ask those questions. Um, first, the first thing I want you to consider is to take active breaks. So every 45 minutes to an hour, whether you're piecing or like literally whatever you're doing in your sewing room, I want you to change your activity, right? And I really recommend actually getting out of your sewing space, like do some stretches, go check the mail, um, go for a walk around the block, go downstairs and get a cup of coffee. Better yet, go downstairs and fill up your water because you want to stay nice and hydrated, right? So take active breaks where you change up how you're holding your body. This is going to help, especially if you are new to being mindful about your posture. You will find as you begin this journey that your abs and your back will be sore. Okay. This is not injured sore. This is I'm using muscles a lot more than I used to use them sore, right? This is like workout sore, but that doesn't mean it's not uncomfortable. Right. But one of the ways that you can help handle that is by moving your body often and changing up how those muscles are being used. Right. Because like even holding your body upright while walking is very different from holding your body upright in a chair. Right. And changing that up will help you um, make this adjustment more smoothly. It's also just good to move. Right. And second, as I already mentioned, drink lots of water. So all movement requires your body to work hard and hydration is going to help everything uh, work together properly. But again, when you're working um, muscles in a new way, so whether that's engaging your abs to sit up straight, engaging your back to sit up straight, you're using your arms and your shoulders and your chest to shove that quilt under your machine, you're building up lactic acid inside your muscles. And water is one of the best and easiest ways to help your body flush that out as quickly as possible. Okay, so staying hydrated will help a lot. Also, using muscles that you've not used in a long time creates, and this is literally like how exercise works, right? Like creates tiny tears in the muscle tissue. And then your body rebuilds that muscle tissue and it's stronger. And that's a good thing, right? But while those tears exist, there's inflammation, right? Your body sends fluids and antibodies and proteins and all the things to rebuild the muscle. But that inflammation is what makes you hurt, right? Like that the, with the lactic acid and all of that. So again, drinking water is also going to reduce that inflammation more quickly. All right. So hopefully that, oh, I just, was this a comment that I saw? Okay. Making sure that I'm not missing anything. Sue, I have not forgotten your question. So the two big things beyond posture I want you to consider is taking active breaks every 45 minutes to an hour, get up, walk around, change scenery, right? And then second, to be drinking a lot of water, all right? Think of this as, um, I mean, kind of as a workout, right? It's good if you stretch before and after. It's great for you to drink water. You want to change up your activity from time to time to give different muscle groups a chance to engage, all right? All right, here's the question. So Sue's already gotten us started with a great question. So if you're feeling excited about all this, give me some hearts. Um, especially if this is something new to you. And also at this point, if you are tuning in and you have a quilting friend that maybe has not considered the physiology of quilting or you think would find this interesting, feel free to tag them in the comments of this video because it would be really cool for them to get to come watch and share in this education as well, okay? So Sue asked a great question. Um, of if, are there any differences in standing posture when using the AccuQuilt? You find it more uncomfortable. So the AccuQuilt is kind of an awkward thing, Sue, and I agree. Now, I would recommend, um, if possible, that you use your AccuQuilt on a surface that's a little lower than your cutting surface. Now, I make this recommendation, but I'm going to be honest with you. I use my AccuQuilt on my cutting table, but I'll share with you the um, challenging observations that I've made right? It's the same thing as when you put your sewing machine on a tabletop to quilt with it, right? And we talk about you don't want the chicken wing arms when you're quilting, right? Because if you've got a table and your table is at the appropriate height at the bottom of your rib cage, right? That's the appropriate height for your sewing machine table. But then you set the sewing machine on top of the table and add your quilting table. Well, then your quilting surface is like getting up higher, closer to your sternum, 
which means that you are not able to have that relaxed 90 degree angle for quilting or piecing. Instead, you're holding your arms like this and you look like a little dinosaur or a little chicken, right? And I noticed the same problem with using my AccuQuilt on my cutting table is it, that it's too high, right? So your cutting table, you've already raised it up so that when you're standing again, you can get kind of a gentle 90 degree angle as you're holding your ruler and moving your rotary cutter. But then you put your AccuQuilt on top of it, which, you know, like so. Trying not to pinch my fingers, but you can see this AccuQuilt is several inches thick, right? Woo. So then by the time you add that on top of your table, again, you're having to scrunch the shoulders and bend the arms too much in order to feed everything through and twist. And that is awkward, right? So depending on where you normally do your cutting, um, if you can find a slightly lower surface to use your AccuQuilt, like a kitchen counter, Kitchen counters tend to be a little bit lower actually than sewing cutting tables. And that might be a good uh, option to try just to get those relaxed, like relaxed angles in your arms instead of tense angles, right? Cause you're gonna, having your arm at that tighter angle, it just uses these muscles differently and it's gonna cause a lot of soreness. You're gonna end up with more inflammation. And same thing with, as you're turning the AccuQuilt crank, like if it's up high, you see how my shoulder goes up and my elbows up like this is not good for these joints. Right. I want it to be down here as much as possible. Um, so it's the same principles. But the biggest way to be able to um, hold to those principles is to have a slightly lower cutting surface when you're using the AccuQuilt. I hope that makes sense. Um, hey, Marie, man, I need to go to the dentist. Just sidebar. I'm just do need to get my teeth cleaned. Um, so yes, it's more like standing posture for sure. Um, it's just adjusting that height as well. Okay, great question. Any other questions on this guys? Yeah, Sue, I'd be interested to see if that helps for you. Um, the other thing that you may wanna consider Sue is, I know the AccuQuilt is rated for up to six layers of fabric. I find that it makes a big difference in terms of the strain on my elbow to only put four layers through at a time, right? And because I have, you know, the hand, the AccuQuilt Go, it's the hand crank. And if I'm going to be doing a lot, um, you know, of course, because I love to get things done quickly, my inclination is to put more fabric on. I want to get her done and over with because cutting's not my favorite. Um, but it makes a big difference in terms of the amount of force that crank takes to put just four layers on instead of six. So that's something else you could try because it'll reduce some of that strain. Yeah, great question. That is a really, really great question. Um, yes, you get tennis, well, exactly. I do too, Sandy, I have to go get mine adjusted, um, which mine's been okay recently, but I also get a uh, tennis elbow with the long arm. Yeah, so I have to be careful that I take good breaks, stay really hydrated, all of those things. Because you're, mo you're moving your arm at like weird angles, right? Because your elbow's a hinge. But things like long arming and cranking, you're, it's not, you're not like perfectly hinging it. There's like this twist factor. Yeah, causes a lot of inflammation. So drink all the water. If you have deep blue rub, this is the time to use it. Like not even, like, okay, truly though. So if you... um. Our member of doTERRA, if you're familiar with doTERRA, they're an essential oil company that I'm in love with. Um, and I love their products. And many of you I know have them. And the deep blue rub, I honestly, I will use it before and after many quilting activities. So if I'm going to be working on my domestic, if I'm going to be doing a lot of cutting or a lot of cutting with the AccuQuilt, if I'm going to be working on the long arm, especially elbows and shoulders, I'll actually put the rub on before and after the activity because it promotes healthy circulation in those joints. So it's going to help um, your joints move more easily and with less discomfort while you're working. And then afterwards, it's going to help your body heal faster. All right? I'm telling you, man, these are like, you got to treat it like a workout. <laughs> Like, that sounds like a lot, but yes. And also we use dominant hand. You notice that I'm gesturing with my right hand, not my left hand, right? Because I am right dominant in many activities. Um, not all, but most. All right, guys, thank you so much. Let's see. Are you excited to put your newfound posture knowledge to work? Which, you know what? I was going to change the picture on that, but I really like that Lanterns of Hope uh, quilting plan. So we're going to roll with it. Because if you're looking forward to that opportunity and guys,
we are so close to 2020. Like, do you realize how close we are? We are 16 days. No, 15 days from the new year, right? And January 2nd, Free Motion Quilting Academy is opening back up. So if you're like, okay, I have this posture knowledge. We've been talking about machines, quilting plans. Like, when do I get to put these pieces together? Guys, the countdown is on. I've created Free Motion Quilting Academy to help you transform from a nervous beginner free motion quilter to a confident intermediate level quilter. And Y'all, it is my deep joy to teach this class. So as I mentioned, class opens on January 2nd, but you can go ahead and get on the waiting list if you're already excited for 2020 to finally be your year to become a quilting rock star. And when you put your name on the wait list, you'll also get my top three tips for successful free motion quilting. And that's gonna include a review of some of the things we've been talking about over these last few weeks um, as we're just preparing for the reopening of this class. And it's a great resource to have on hand so that you don't have to be like, I know she mentioned something about, you know, posture, but I don't entirely remember and quilting plans. And this is a resource for you that's good to keep handy so that you can know where you need to go for more information. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited for Free Motion Quilting Academy to be right around the corner. I'm excited to be back with you. Iceland was amazing, but you know, there is no place like home. So hopefully here soon, I'll be a little bit more rested and be feeling a little bit more like myself. I still feel very much like a zombie, uh, but it was a delight to get to jump on with you guys for a little while today. Now, just so you know, I have a few announcements as we're wrapping up. You'll see here on the screen, uh, the link to go get your name on the Free Motion Quilting Academy waiting list. And I'm really excited and hoping to see you there. Um, and for those of you who have already gone through Free Motion Quilting Academy, I hope you're excited for the new students to be coming in to get to watch them and go with them on their journey. Um, but a couple of announcements that are important for you to know. There's no social hour this Saturday night because we are having a big old Christmas party at our house. Um, however, I really miss our social hour time. So I'm going to try to squeeze one in at some point this week. Um, tentatively Thursday night, but honestly, the bottom line is I have to see how I'm feeling. I feel like I'm teetering right on the edge right now of getting sick. And so I have to get some more rest before I can officially like promise a social hour. But I really would love for us, even if it's just for an hour, uh, to be able to jump inside the Quilting Rockstars group and do a little bit of sewing together. I haven't done any sewing since I've been back. And it's it's time. It's time. So hopefully I'll get to do that with you guys. I'll keep you posted. But for sure, we will be back here Next week on Christmas Eve, we're going to talk about thread tension. And I'm really excited about it because tension is one of those kind of big, hairy subjects that everyone's a little bit nervous about. And I have some great tips and tricks for you guys. So be sure to join me back here next week at 11 a.m. Eastern. We're going to talk about tension and we'll be just like days away from Free Motion Quilting Academy at that point. The other thing I want you to know, and this is just the quickest of little like, by the ways, um, if you have gone through Free Motion Quilting Academy or you would already consider yourself a um, advanced beginner or intermediate level quilter, so you have, you know, let's say six to 10 free motion quilting motifs that you're very comfortable quilting, um, then I have a workshop class coming up called Quilting Outside the Lines. And it's all about taking um, quilting motifs and creating a quilting plan that totally disregards the seam lines of the quilt, right? This is modern custom quilting at its finest. And that workshop is coming up on December 28th. It'll be hosted in a pop-up Facebook group right here online. And we'll be doing work via camera, um, which I will have my other camera working by then. I installed a new driver for it to try to fix the video quality. You guys remember how blurry it's been and now it's just hiccuping. So we'll get that worked out. But anyway, um, if you're on my email list, then you have received some emails from me about this workshop. Uh, but if you have, are not on my email list, I hope that you'll get signed up. Getting on the Free Motion Quilting Academy waiting list is one way that you can make sure that I have your email address. Uh, but I do wanna make sure that y'all know that signups are open through Thursday for the Quilting Outside the Lines workshop. And you can find that in the shop on my website. So stringandstory.com forward slash shop. You'll be able to read all the details and get signed up there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to be back and be with you guys. Hopefully we'll be able to squeeze in a little social hour together. And if not, I'll see you on Christmas Eve. All right, guys, have an absolutely wonderful week. I'll see you in the Facebook group in the meanwhile. And uh, oh, and whip number twos for those of you who are doing the quilts along. I'm about to go close that post down. So anyway, thanks for being here with me, you guys. I'll talk to you soon.